Harris, we're starting. I just mean, be quiet. Ice cream sandwiches, take one. When's the last time we, we shot? It's been a while. <laughs> are, you, are you leaving? Okay, bye. What's the name of this? Ice cream sandwich. Brown, salty brown ice cream sandwiches. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Staffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have a recipe from What's For Dessert that is perfect for the warmer months. It is my salty brownie ice cream sandwiches. It uses store-bought ice cream. Maybe let it soften for a minute or two. Look at the spoon, I just bent it. You just bake some brownie slabs. It's really fun and easy to put together and just the most nostalgic, delicious, homemade ice cream sandwich. This brownie is very different from the forever brownie because it is meant to be eaten frozen. And it's not like a big chunky brownie that you would just be eating like out of the pan. There's super thin slabs of brownie and it's designed to be eaten frozen so it doesn't freeze solid and get really hard. It still maintains like a soft chewiness. And so it's a really perfect base for an ice cream sandwich. For f the flavor of the ice cream, I just go with vanilla and I actually incorporate lightly crushed up Oreos into that ice cream filling. And so you get this like delicious cookies and cream kind of flavor. And to me, that's the perfect foil for that brownie. But you could definitely use any flavor of ice cream you like. You could leave the cookies out. You could use a different cookie. You could add any kind of like mix in that you like. So it's highly adaptable, but I'm just gonna show you the flavor that I like to use. The first ingredient I don't have out because I'm keeping it in the freezer and that is two pints of vanilla ice cream. So that's just staying cold. But other than that, very, very straightforward. I have four ounces of Oreos. That's gonna go in the filling. Then for the brownie itself, I have two large eggs. So vanilla extract, two tablespoons of neutral oil. You'll need a little bit more for the pan. Five tablespoons unsalted butter, four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, some flaky salt, just a quarter cup of granulated sugar, kosher salt, a half cup of flour. The actual like assembly of the recipe doesn't take that long, but you'll probably want to do it a day ahead just so it has time to freeze really solid. I have an eight by eight baking pan. And then I just have a couple of medium bowls and a large bowl for putting together the batter and then making the filling and like a whisk and a spatula and that's really it. And then the last thing is I have a saucepan over on the stove with a little bit of water and that's how we're gonna melt the chocolate and put together the brownie batter. So the first thing we wanna do is put together our brownie batter. I'm gonna get the oven preheating. Now this bakes at 325, so like a little bit lower than normal, but it bakes very, very quickly because we're baking super thin layers of brownie. Make sure you have your oven rack in the center. Then I'm gonna prepare my pan. So this is a heavy duty foil, and what I did was I really carefully pressed it into the bottom and especially into the corners. And I just want the brownie batter to like be as flat as possible and to get into every corner and up the sides of the pan. I did that really carefully so I didn't puncture the foil. And now I'm gonna spray it lightly with a little bit of neutral oil. You can just brush it on if you're using the same oil that you're using for the batter. This is an avocado oil spray. This is just to prevent any sticking on the foil. Not the best spray actually. So now for the brownie batter. I have two medium bowls. This is actually for ice cream so this can go back here. One I'm gonna use to melt the chocolate and the fats and then the other will be for the eggs and the rest of the batter. So I'm gonna add my chocolate, my butter, and my oil. I want butter for the flavor, but I really like the kind of texture that oil brings. So this is gonna go now over to the stove and I have a saucepan with just like an inch of water in the bottom. And I'm gonna turn it on medium and that is going to slowly melt the chocolate. So I'm gonna set the bowl over the saucepan. Cal, can you capture? Yep. I don't really like canoes and kayaks on the ocean. Yeah. Because of, it's just not pleasant. Yeah. Whereas like on a lake, it's very pleasant. The chocolate mixture is completely melted, so it's super smooth. I can set this aside. And now I'm going to whisk together my eggs and sugar. Now I'm using two large eggs. This is a very, very eggy 
brownie batter. Normally for this quantity of chocolate and other ingredients, I would probably use one egg, but I'm using two because having that really eggy batter is going to prevent the brownie when it's baked from freezing really, really hard. So it's still gonna be soft when you bite into it. So I'm just gonna whisk this together. I'm actually gonna add my vanilla. I think it's just about a teaspoon of extract. I wanna whisk this together really well, and I want it to get a little bit foamy, a little bit pale, and it'll get a little bit thickened. When you're making any kind of brownie recipe, separately mixing together the eggs and the sugar is usually gonna help you to develop that crackly, shiny top that everybody wants with their brownies. And that's because essentially you're kind of like making a meringue-like mixture by beating together the eggs and the sugar. So if you have a brownie recipe that you love and you wish that you had a more crackly, shiny top, you can try separating out the eggs and sugar and whisking them together first. Generally speaking, the more sugar in the brownie recipe, the, the sort of more you'll develop that crackly, shiny top. So because this is low sugar, it doesn't really get that look, but it's still super delicious. Okay, so that's nice and foamy. Now I am going to stream this into my chocolate mixture. I can't remember if the recipe says to put the eggs into the chocolate or the chocolate into the eggs, but it doesn't matter. Can you, mm-hmm. you want to do chocolate into eggs? Starting to get nice and thick. It's very hard to scrape out a bowl when you can't see inside. I get a little bit obsessive about scraping out bowls. So you can see this looks really beautiful and smooth. And now I'm just gonna add the flour and kosher salt. The name of the recipe is Salty Brownie Ice Cream Sandwich, so give a nice saltiness to the batter. Then a half cup all-purpose flour, relatively low amount of flour, because we want these brownies to stay flexible and moist so that they don't freeze really hard. So here's the brownie batter. So now I'm gonna bake the first slab of brownie. I'm gonna scrape just about half of the batter into my prepared pan. And this I kind of just eyeball. The first slab that I'm baking is gonna be the top of the ice cream sandwiches. So this is gonna get a layer of flaky salt. But first I wanna spread this out into the pan and I want it to get all the way to all four sides and all four corners. It is worth it to just take the time to make sure it's as smooth as possible and as even as possible. And this is why I took some time to smooth the foil really well. You wanna eliminate as many folds as possible or just smooth them really well so, because you don't want the batter to get into any crevices like in the foil. It's just gonna make it harder to unmold. People say like, why use foil? Like, why don't you use parchment? When do you use one or the other? I'm using foil because it's easier for it to hold its shape in the pan. And I would worry with parchment that there might be some curling and then it's not going to have a really square shape. And also with anything frozen, it's helpful to use foil because it gets cold really fast. So it's gonna help set everything in the freezer. So here's my first brownie slab. I'm going to sprinkle it with some flaky salt. You don't have to use flaky salt. You could omit this or you could just give it like a little bit of kosher. But I like flaky salt because you have big salt crystals and so you can see them and you get like a little crunch when you bite down on them. This is gonna go into the oven. Again, it's at 325. And this bakes really quickly because it's so thin. Because this is such an eggy batter, it's gonna puff up quite a bit in places, but that's fine, it's gonna settle back down. So don't be alarmed if you see like big kind of puffs. I'm gonna set the timer for eight. Actually nine, because last night I made this and it took nine minutes. The timer went off, it's been nine minutes. My nose tells me that it's done. I am looking for the surface to be like matte as in no longer shiny. And it's puffed up in places, which again, that will settle and it's gonna be firm to the touch. So it's nice and springy when I press on it. So this is definitely done. It looks great. I wanna use the same pan and the same foil to bake the remaining batter. But before I do that, this has to cool a little bit. So you're gonna lift the whole thing out, reserve for your pan, because you're gonna use that not only to bake the second, batch of brownies, but to assemble the entire thing. So I'm just kind of going around the edge of the brownie slab, making sure it's not sticking anywhere. That little coating of oil should really help. And now what I want to do is just sort of get my spatula underneath the brownie slab and try not to tear the foil, if you can help it. 
basically I'm just loosening the brownie from the foil. If you have any tearing of the brownie slab at any point, it's actually not a big deal because as it freezes, you can really like smush it back together and it will kind of hold. So now I'm going to just slide this slab onto the cutting board. And I can reuse this foil. So this is gonna go right back into my pan. Same thing, really take care that you're pressing it all the way into the corner so you have as flat a surface as possible. I'm gonna give it a little bit more oil. I don't think it really needs it, but it's just a good insurance policy against sticking. The rest of the batter is gonna go in. I made actually a swap last night, so I did the whole thing and froze it. I really, I think I did a really bad job of guessing what half the batter was. So one side is gonna be a little thinner than the other, but it doesn't really matter. Here's that second layer. This is gonna go into the oven. It's still on 325. Bake for the same amount of time. So this went about nine minutes and then we'll pull that out. No flaky salt on this one. Set it for nine minutes. So while that last batch of batter is baking, good alliteration, I'm gonna crush on my Oreos. Biscoff and Oreo are kind of like my go-to like baking cookies is just a thing to have, but you could use graham crackers, shortbread, ginger snaps would be really good. I'm leaving the pieces big enough that when I slice through the ice cream, I'm gonna be able to see that I have Oreo there. There's gonna be like cookie filling cookie. The second batch is done. I'm gonna pull them out. There's kind of a, a top to the brownies that's a little bit shinier and smoother. And then there's the other side, which is like more matte. I'm just doing that same thing with the spatula. If you want the ice cream sandwiches to have the same kind of look on the top and bottom, unmold your second layer, turn it upside down and put it back in the pan. Just like so. You can see it's still pretty hot. The recipe says to let it cool, I'm kind of rushing things. It will be less delicate once it's cooled a little bit, but it's pretty flexible even as is. And now I'm gonna put this back into the pan. Make sure you get that pressed in there. And now this is the base of my ice cream sandwiches and this is the top. The next step is to mix our filling. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get these into the freezer so that they can get really cold. And having the brownies cold and the pan cold are just gonna help set everything when you add the ice cream. Oh God. If you have the freezer real estate, it's a good idea, I recommend, freezing your bowl. So work on a metal bowl because it's gonna get really cold. I didn't have room for that. You will need a large bowl like this but it's fine. Oh my God, look at the spoon, I just bent it. Maybe let it soften for a minute or two, but you're just gonna do like big scoops into the bowl, but I'm gonna show you how to cut it. So I'm just running this big chef's knife down this paper carton. You can see that I just cut it lengthwise and then crosswise, so I have the ice cream in pieces. And this allows me to work quickly enough that it's not really starting to melt yet. So what I'm doing is just sort of working the ice cream against the side of the bowl. And as it warms up a little bit, it's gonna become spreadable. It's gonna sort of look like a thick cake batter. It's gonna totally hold its shape, but have a sort of smooth, stirrable texture. Especially against the side of the bowl, it's starting to soften. So I'm just gonna kind of keep smashing and folding it. And then at that point, I am gonna actually switch to a flexible spatula because it will be soft enough that I can stir it. You know what you could also do? Now, in what's for dessert, I don't call for a stand mixer anywhere, but if you wanted to use one, you could paddle this. So you could put, I would do the same thing where you cut it up into pieces or scoop it out, but you can get this into the stand mixer and paddle it and that's gonna do a lot of the work for you. But just make sure you don't overbeat it. So this is getting pretty smooth and foldable. I am now going to add my Oreo bits. These are gonna go in. Ooh, there's a whole one. At this point, the ice cream has softened a little bit, so I wanna work somewhat quickly. You don't wanna just like walk away and leave this here because it will melt on you, of course. So I'm just folding this to incorporate the Oreos and to distribute them evenly into the ice cream. So this is my filling. This is ready to go into my pan. So I'm gonna grab that from the freezer. So all of this is gonna go in. Spread this into an even layer. If I was really confident this was pretty frozen still, and my top layer of brownie was pretty frozen, I could put that on directly, but I'm gonna freeze this 
for a little bit before I put that top layer on. I think the recipe says 45 minutes. Probably gonna cheat it a little bit and go a little bit less. But I'm just gonna freeze it so that I can set that top layer of ice cream before I put the final layer of brownie on. And then it has to really freeze solid before you cut. But fortunately I have a swap. This is gonna go back into the freezer. And I would say maybe 15 minutes I'll put that top layer of brownie on. Even just 15 minutes in the freezer when I do this, like there's no melting at all. It's actually pretty firm. So here is that second slab of brownie. This is the slab, that first one we baked, that has that flaky salt on top. So this is gonna be the top of the ice cream sandwiches. So I'm just gonna press it on here so that it's totally in contact with the ice cream. And one important thing to note is that because of the sort of slight shrinking that happened during baking, the ice cream is a little bit bigger all the way around than the brownie. So that's why we're gonna trim these and I'm gonna stick this back in the freezer. You wanna let it freeze completely solid, so I would say at least an hour in the freezer. And if your freezer like gets a lot of traffic and it's like open and shut a lot, I would let it go even longer. So I have actually a whole slab that I set up last night. So I'm gonna pull that one out and show you how to cut them into the cutest little ice cream sandwiches. So here's my one from last night. I actually just had already popped it out of the mold because I needed the same pan for today. So all I did was lift up with that foil. It came out no problem. And I'm just gonna peel that down and away from the ice cream. And then peel the whole thing off the back. So you can see it's really solid. So you wanna use a sharp chef's knife and I am going to shave off a thin strip of ice cream and brownie from all four sides. I just wanna cut off enough that I'm cutting through both layers of brownie and the ice cream. These are your chef snacks, but also just pop them in the freezer and then that's like your dessert for whenever you're not having ice cream sandwiches. So now to get that rectangular dimension, I'm gonna cut it in half in one direction. And then I'm gonna cut it into fourths in the other direction. So in half again, the other way and then in half again. Okay, I wanna taste these before they totally melt. They're starting to melt a little bit. This is just a great summertime treat that you can make totally ahead. So once you have them cut up like this, just store them in like an airtight container in the freezer. They'll be good for weeks and weeks. And I just love those little like cross sections of Oreo sticking in there. As I was cutting, I wasn't like squishing out the ice cream. That brownie stays really soft and just gets like super chewy, but it has, you know, it's not so hard that it's gonna like be difficult to eat. And that was really important. So I'm gonna taste. Mm, it's getting a little soft. The brownie is so chewy, such good texture. I love the kind of light crunch from the cookies. Mm. You know, when things are cold, it tends to dull the flavor a little bit. So as you eat it, at first you're just kind of experiencing the sweetness and cold from the ice cream, and then you really get that brownie flavor. And it's pretty chocolatey, the chocolatiness comes through. I'm not a huge chocolate person, but this is the kind of chocolate recipe I really love because it's balanced out by the creaminess of the ice cream, great texture, I love the salt on top. There's like no chocolate dessert where I don't want a little bit of salt on top. So easy to put together, really fun, that like stirring the ice cream I think would be a great project for kids. So we're gonna bring you more, plus other dessert person content. And if there's anything you wanna see me make in the future, leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.